uh, good afternoon, uh, good evening, everybody. Appreciate you all joining us, and thanks to all the staff who uh, worked hard, obviously, to set all this 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 meeting space up. Uh, thank you to my colleagues, and thank you to our to our colleagues on the school board, Dr. Cashwell, uh, Mr. Manager. Thank you for making time for this. This is critically important. I know we all value the time that we get to spend together. It's not um, it's not often enough, really, that we get to spend this time. So thank you all for making some some time. Got a couple quick notes. Mr. Brandon's on the way. He'll be here uh, shortly. And uh, we had a phone call recently from Mr. Thornton. He's unable to join us for a last minute commitment um, and sends his regrets. Uh, with that note, uh, Mr. Manager. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, the uh, members of the school board and Madam Superintendent, the only item that we have on this joint work session is a joint work session between the uh, school board and the board of supervisors there was an agenda that was shared with the superintendent uh, earlier a number of topics that have been put forward and this is really just uh, based on conversations that uh, dr cashwell and i had with uh, each of you and uh, each other so a number of items that go from uh, school board updates to a uh, uh, capital budget that we that will actually be presented to the uh, Board of Supervisors here shortly, the uh, second Tuesday, actually, in March, although it feels like somewhat that the budget is a little bit of an afterthought with uh, some of the uh, considerations that have been put forward for compensation for uh, all of our employees. Uh, there is a, uh, we do have a history. I was telling uh, Ms. O'Bannon, we were driving over here, this may be new information for some of the newer school board members, but Dr. Cashwell, who is uh, who I continue to say is the best superintendent in the Commonwealth of Virginia, is actually the third superintendent I have had the pleasure of working with uh, in this county. And there are a number of uh, successes that this county has built on between our school system and the general government. And I have, uh, so I have asked Mr. Hinton to speak to the proposed capital budget. Uh, Mr. Uh, <clears throat> uh, Mr. Crawford will add some information regarding, uh, for our board regarding the achievable dream. And then I've asked Megan Coates to just touch on some of the highlights that we have worked on collectively. And then there's a component for moving forward. But Dr. Cashwell, I don't mean to monopolize a uh, conversation. That is simply an overview for you, your board, of super, your uh, school board. And so if I can, I'd like to kick it off, kick it over to you. And if you would, uh, uh, short of any, any comments, Mr. Chairman, um, Mr. Chairman uh, on the school board or Madam Chair, Madam Chairman, uh, any uh, comments that you all may have. All right. Thank you, Mr. Manager and uh, Chairman Schmidt for your opening remarks. And we are certainly uh, thrilled to be here and have an opportunity to continue the strong collaboration that uh, we know is so important as we chart our course forward on any number of items that you've got listed here. And I think this agenda represents certainly uh, some of the topics that are top of mind and of urgency as we move through the budget season and into capital planning. So um, appreciate the agenda items and uh, have an item some school board updates for you to share. There's a lot of excitement, uh, certainly in Henrico County schools over the past two days as we welcomed a large number of our pre-K through two students back into person. Uh, a lot of excitement there and we'll be uh, ramping that up over the next few weeks. So um, that was uh, a shared effort to get to that point on a number of fronts, including uh, making sure some of our infrastructure was ready uh, with safety and that sort of thing. So continue to thank everyone uh, on, on the Henrico County government team and the schools team who got us to this point. And so I know that our uh, chairwoman, Ms. Ogburn, uh, wanted to take us through a few of those opening agenda items that we surfaced, um, but happy to go in any order you see fit. Absolutely. And, and just I'll echo the, our appreciation for the opportunity to meet with all of you. It's very important work, and it's important that we do this collaboratively and we work together. Um, as Dr. Cashwell said, we were excited to welcome kids back to school yesterday and today. 
and also excited for the vaccination effort that's going on for our staff that is making some of what we're doing possible and able to get our teachers back in safely. And we're now getting emails. Can we come back too? And we're some people who were choosing uh, virtual are now wanting to come back. Um, so we're really appreciate um, of that and for the compensation. Um, it, as you probably saw, there were a number of teachers being interviewed by on the news to how excited they were. And the common theme was this is life altering. This is a game changer for me and my family. So we are really appreciative of the efforts of, of but also for listening to our staff members and our county employees. That's so important. And um, so we really appreciate that. Um, so those are our first two things, but we wanted to sort of tee up an idea that we have um, for um, our opening of Holiday Tucker in Highland Springs and see if uh, the Board of Supervisors would be interested in, join in joining our efforts and basically doing a joint committee to plan those wonderful events that we have to look forward to. So I'll kind of open that um, for discussion. Um, I had asked Mrs. Kinsella and Ms. Atkins to serve on that committee. I think they both said yes. Am I right? Putting you on the spot. Yeah, that's fine. And traditionally, if we look back at schools that, you know, have been open with ribbon ceremonies, right. grand openings, I think the last one in the Verina district was Elko. And so it's critically important that, that we collaborate and have a community. But I'm also aware that we also want to make sure that it's inclusive of feedback from mm -hmm. Dr. White, the staff, Absolutely. and the students. And so I think that as we continue our efforts, we'll build a timeline. Usually planning for events of this magnitude is a, around a three month. So mm -hmm. my expectation would be that the conversations and the committee would start to get started maybe somewhere around May, April, May. Mm -hmm. And so it probably would be great to provide just a very high level timeline for planning efforts so that all involved know when to ask the questions of, here are some ideas I have. Let me ask you about funds. Let me ask you about who else can participate. So I think it's a lovely idea as long as we keep in mind that we want to make sure that we include Dr. White, his staff and students in the whole ceremony. Absolutely. And I think critical to include our principals and staff members. And so what I was hoping that we could do is essentially form that committee, get the two of you to represent the school board on that, because as it turns, I don't know how many people know that uh, the three chop district is the home of Tucker, but Mrs. Kinsella actually sends more students to Tucker than than I do in, from three chop. But so I have asked her to do it. But anyway, we thought that this would be a good way for our board members to get together and our staff members to begin to plan, set up that timeline and, and get it going so that this was a joint celebration. Um, so I'll throw that out, Mr. Chairman, first to, to see what the your team thinks of that and what, how we can move that forward. Thanks, Ms. Ogburn. I appreciate it. Uh, there is, uh, I can tell you that there is extreme amount of uh, desire and energy to welcome these new new facilities on board and in our system as well as welcome the students to them. So you know, I, I appreciate the, the sentiment. I'll, I'll certainly open the floor to my colleagues for their thoughts and willingness to, to not only serve, but also as Ms. Atkins mentioned, to be able to reach out to include as many people in that process as as functional and feasible, right? You know, it's just, this doesn't need to be a laundry list, but it needs to be people who can be invested in it and can have some, some assistance in, in how we strategize to, to celebrate the achievements of really what this county has done and before before I open it to my colleagues, I just want to make one point. I want to make sure that we that the public understands and that we know because we talk about it every day. Two new high schools and doubling the size of an elementary school to open up on the exact same day. I mean, come on, with a with a remarkable uh, timetable, right? A Titan timetable. Tremendous work and tremendous planning that has gone on to get that done. So it should be celebrated. And I think the optics of both of our boards. Um, participating in how we celebrate that is monumental and that, really is important to absolutely. what absolutely and is. and we're hoping that um, that committee will share people that should be included and you know I specifically think of of inviting Dr. Kinlaw to come back and others who were part of the school system when this idea 
started a couple of years ago. So I, I think that's a good way for us to to be sure we don't leave anyone out. Yeah, I mean, I, I would offer to start the conversation. Certainly, uh, Mr. Nelson has been, there's been no more passionate individual I've ever spoken with about what's going on in Alice mm -hmm. Springs. So, Mr. Nelson, I'll certainly give you an opportunity to weigh in on that or any thoughts you might have. I just would, I would suggest that you, you select who, who you think. I mean, clearly I would love to be on it. Um, and wherever holiday and Tucker falls within you guys. Yeah, I mean, clearly, uh, as as the Verona district rep, I would, I, would, I would love to have Mr. Nelson serve on that. And, you know, in three chop, uh, Mr. Brand is not here right now, but, you know, that, that's that's a school that falls clearly. In it, what was mentioned was right. Um, Brooklyn does, I think we sent 50 something percent, 54 percent to that school. So um, I'll, I'll certainly catch up with Mr. Brand. I would, I would, I would certainly like to, to volunteer told him to to do that and we'll go on that method right now and i'll pitch in from a brooklyn perspective with holiday if if we fail in that effort so mickey thank you um, um i certainly look forward to seeing how we build that group and and how we can really tell the story you know and because the, the buildings are going to open the kids are going to go in there. they're going to get off the bus and they're going to walk in there and the teachers are going to celebrate the new space but how do we tell that story and how do we do it you know together Ms. Uh, Ms. O'Bannon, any, any thoughts on, on that? <laughs> I'll be there. <laughs> I was sitting here and thinking, um, you know, confetti and noisemakers and cheerleaders and the band. and <laughs> But, um, no, I, I, obviously, I'll, I'll, I'll be in attendance at all three. But um, I'm not sure exactly everything you're going to plan, but the band and the cheerleaders and the noisemakers for the kids. I mean, obviously, when you said you want to involve the students, I, I really like that idea. I mean, it's more than just anything else. So, okay. I also like the personal touch we took, you know, for the groundbreaking of Tucker. We had some past folks there that were really critical to that school and some history was talked about. Um, I know we did it at holiday as well. And, you know, we should embrace that as well. So, Mr. Manager, Dr. Cashwell, I don't think we need to belabor that point. We certainly are. I think we're all in agreement of putting that together. Um, if we can run that through Ms. Kinsella and Ms. Atkins and Mr. Nelson, Mr. Brandon, then we'll, uh, we'll move that forward. All right. I think those cover the opening items we wanted to surface related to schools. And um, certainly I'll be in touch uh, with the manager on next steps re regarding logistics for that planning committee and look forward to involving you. So, Dr. Cashwell, members of the school board, members of the board, um, the uh, following topics are not any kind of order, if you will, um, just the way the agenda was put forward. But these are topics that seem to have come up throughout the year. And um, so the first topic is uh, the achievable dream. I know that uh, the target that you were given includes funding for uh, the sixth grade, some conversation within the community, some long history um, with our board and Mr. Nelson and what, uh, you know, what was a concerted targeted effort for that program at uh, Highland Springs Elementary School. I do have Mr. Crawford, if you would come to the podium. So he's got just a, a very literal two minute version of this is the funding that was provided or has been provided uh, because I don't want staff to monopolize the conversation. So Justin, if you would. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Manager. Um, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, Madam Chair, members of the school board, thank you this, um, for allowing me, the, as the manager noted, a very quick uh, presentation, just a, a quick overview of the history of the Achievable Dream Academy that uh, is uh, currently in its uh, uh, fifth year of, of, of effort uh, with uh, started in FY17 with some planning efforts. Um, uh, uh, planning the uh, program together and then um, the current fiscal year added the uh, fifth grade um, to the uh, and completed the uh, implementation of the elementary school phase. Uh, as the manager noted, uh, the uh, fiscal year 22 budget will add the, uh, will start the implementation of the secondary with adding sixth grade. Um, and uh, on the handout you have, uh, you'll see that the expenses uh, 10.7 million up uh, through June 30 of 2020. 
Uh, and just as a note, the 21 and 22 budgets will add an additional $10.5 million um, of what we have spent for this program. And uh, with the, with the uh, sixth grade piece totaling a, a $1.4 million adjustment uh, that uh, will come forward in March. Um, so with that, Mr. Man, um, Mr. Chairman, Madam Chair, uh, open it up to any questions or any conversation. Thank you, Mr. Crawford. Mr. Man, any questions for you? Is that, is that a question? No, I was um, just kicking back to awesome. you, sir. Uh, Mr. Crawford, thank you very much for that, for that summary. Any questions from my colleagues on, on this or commission? Good. Any questions from the school board side? Any thoughts on this? Uh, if, Mr. Chair, go ahead, Mr. Brown. Uh, I, I just found out, and I'm very excited to hear I'm part of the planning committee for <laughs> So let that be a lesson to everybody. Don't ever show up late <laughs> because you get volunteers. So, I'm excited about it. I'm told. So, uh, Mr. Crawford, thanks for the summary. Uh, I think, you know, I know there's been discussion. There's been discussion around this topic. I just want to make sure that that we understand moving forward the commitment um, collectively that we have to this program. Um, there, you can see there's been a significant investment in it. Uh, we all know that milestones and achievements um, matter, um, but we also know that this was created um, really to to put forth an effort to make a difference. Um, and I, I, I'd like to I'd like to have some type of conversation around that that we that we can understand really what measurable achievements and what measurable marks uh, are, are we are, can we seek to put on this to make sure that we're continuing to push forward in a way that's best for those kids, and, and also to know that a financial a continued financial commitment for a project like this just continues to signify the effort being put forth to really make a difference for for kids that need it. So. Um, I, I know there's been individualized discussions on this, and I just want to bring it forth today to make sure that if anybody has any comments to share with each other on that, now's a good time. And so I'll, I'll jump on in here. Um, thinking about funding, I think one of one of the things that's top of mind, there's been a significant amount of research discussion with several key holders um, within Henrico County Public Schools leadership teams within the school itself, coupled with uh, Pastor Nelson and I, along with Achievable Dream. And I'm delighted that we're at a place where we understand that, you know, some of the academic results, we are certainly disappointed in that. However, we are at a place where both agree that in order to have a promising and trusting relationship in effort to make sure that these kids are well served, that measurements are needed. So I'm very happy that, that you asked the question around measurements. I think that's something that needed improvement. And through my discovery process, I learned that measurements indeed uh, were not adequate. And so through discussions between both parties in Rico County and Achievable Dream, measurements have been shared and discussed. And I think that that's going to help us in making sure that we serve the kids as best as we can. And so that is very, very good news. Our funding hasn't changed. Um, it is the same as it was shared uh, you know, back in January. So from a funding perspective, uh, and Dr. Cashwell, keep me honest and candid here, but from a funding perspective, we are not asking for anything different. And so I think that, you know, what a great compromise and what a great place we're in when we can work together and do our research, understand where we are and put measurements around where we want to be. The second piece of this uh, conversation really resides that I see, you know, um, on, on my agenda here is around location. And that's another big piece of this partnership. And where is the fifth grade class going to go? We need to know, have an answer for that. And so both parties are in discussion looking at viable options for next steps. And we're moving fairly quickly to come up with options. And once we're at a place where all of these different options are viable, it's going to be important that we stay transparent, not only with the Board of Supervisors, but with the community as well. 
And so as we continue that process, we'll be sure to share that. Thank you, ma'am. Any, any questions or comments on it? Couple of questions. Um, yes, sir. Thanks for the opportunity to have a discussion. The um, and I guess I've asked this question before, but I'm gonna ask this now so everybody can hear it. What makes um, Highland Springs Elementary School any different as it relates to standards? And I guess that's always been my question. I never thought that the elementary school. You know, I, I've been hearing this more. You know, I heard this a lot as we discuss with Ms. Atkins um, and others. But previously, when this program first came in 2017, I never, uh, it was never shared with me that the Achievable Dream Academy, the program at Achievable, the, the program Achievable Dream Academy at Highland Springs High School had any level of standard that was different than any other elementary school. That the the teachers that worked there were employees of Henrico County Public Schools. The principal is was an employee of Henrico County School. I guess I've become confused as it relates to the dialogue and expectations of the school. Um, I, clearly, we are investing more in this particular school, so there should be a different level of expectation. Um, well, let me not say that. I understand that there are some more modified levels of expectation, um, but I want to make sure that I'm clear because I'm hearing all, I'm hearing a lot of different things, um, and going forward. So I'm assuming that there's going to be an MOU with some defined expectations. I'm assuming. So I just throw that out there um, that at some point, um, whatever the expectations are for the school. You know, I would at least like to know what they are, if they are any different than any other elementary school. Uh, but help me understand when we talk about the expectations for Highland Springs Elementary School, what are the different expectations there than you would have with any other elementary school? Um, reading, math, so whatever, whatever the expectations are. I'm just confused as it relates to um, this program, again, is just a program, it's a partnership. I, I still don't, don't, unless I'm seeing this wrong, I did not think that we were ceding command or power to a program to run our school and we not have any, um, that it was really on achievable dream and it's not a Henrico County Public School. I hope I'm not confusing you with what I'm saying, but I've always been led to believe that the Achievable Dream Academy at Highland Springs Elementary School, Highland Springs Elementary School is still a Henrico County Public School. Thus, the expectations ought to be wherever Henrico County Public School standards are. Um, and that the program supplements the work, that they were not giving control of the school uh, to the elementary. We're not giving control of Highland Springs Elementary to Achieve a Dream Academy. Maybe there is no clear um, definition of that, but I, I must say that I am thoroughly confused now. And I was not um, when we first started this. I, I would like to offer um, what I hope might uh, be a start for an explanation and some answers, but certainly I know uh, the board and I'd be happy to follow up on any concerns that we might not be able to address here, but um, you're right. And, and you know, this is a Henrico uh, County school and, and it's also um, bound to the same standards that all of our schools are under state standards of accreditation and so forth. So all those benchmarks still matter and we still need to reach them. Uh, uh, at the inception of this partnership in 2017, and there is uh, and was an MOU developed that still stands as part of that partnership that does talk about the distinct responsibilities of Achievable Dream, uh, their staff, their curriculum, and their program as it should be implemented in partnership with the Henrico County Public Schools. So um, you're absolutely right in that there are still these uh, core educational experiences that we provide as a county schools and our curriculum and that, that experience. And 
And then this MOU that was entered into in 2017, and part of what these fees are covering is the use of their licensed material, as well as additional resources and additional asks of staff that while we hire, they have extended contracts for things like uh, the length of the school day is longer than in our other schools. There are Saturday events that are held that aren't Saturday school. That's not something that happens in our other schools. There's a social and emotional curriculum that's to be taught in accordance with the layout that Achievable Dream um, provided at the time the MOU was put in place. So, um, you know, that does involve what is truly a partnership, collaboration and discussion. How do we still provide this core Henrico County curriculum um, to all of the students there and ensure that they're mastering the state standards they need to, to meet, meet the benchmarks for success, but also, um, you know, find a way to infuse these elements that were determined to be really important and, and a necessary added layer for these students in regards to social, emotional, and some of those other pieces. So I think in any partnership, um, when you move along the way, you know, if we're seeing that those academic benchmarks aren't where we want them to be, we have to ask ourselves internally, Henrico County Schools, as well as have our partners come to the table and make sure that nothing that's happening in this relationship is at the detriment of one or the other. So, you know, is there, for an example, um, the amount of time or the way we're spending time on some of those social emotional components, which are very important, inhibiting our ability to cover maybe our literacy components. And so I think it's an ongoing conversation, um, you know, between Achievable Dream staff and the way they envision and, you know, they have a record on how this program works and how it was developed and designed um, and making sure that we follow some of those core pieces, but that we're able to work to adjust it as needed uh, to meet the needs of the school and the kids. And so, um, you know, while this has been in pl place through 2017, that's still a fairly new partnership, right? So by adding one grade level each year, there's a lot to be learned. There's a lot new. We're only, uh, you know, finishing the first year of the fifth graders. And, you know, in March, we had a pandemic strike. And so there are a lot of added layers here. But I think any opportunity, as Mrs. Atkins said, where we can come together and analyze um, what's happening for students, how can we improve those outcomes and get better at what we're doing? And in this case, I think it's a, a candid conversation with Achievable Dream and our own staff about what do we need to make sure that we keep our eyes on those standards and benchmarks that you're right are not different for any student in the county and make sure that we're holding ourselves accountable to having our students achieve those and make sure that we're not uh, in any sort of um, structure that's inhibiting our ability to do that. All right, sounds good. So you answered my question and uh, I just want to repeat again though, I've not heard you say that we have ceded control of the school to a program. One of my questions has been over the past few, really as attention has um, been turned toward the school over the last few months, that this school and our central, um, um, central staff um, have been um, keeping their eye on Hallam Springs Elementary School just like they have every other um, elementary school. Um, and so the trends, the ups and the downs, uh, these are not things that just miraculously appear. These are things that we have been seeing and we have known. Um, you know, I guess my hope and my concern as we go forward is that, um, that we too accept the responsibility of the perceived non-success and that, um, that this is that we need to do things better on both sides is what I'm hearing you say that uh, we need to work better together. But as you look at the stats from 17, from 17, 18, 18, 19, 19, 20, 20, 21, none of this stuff just flew from out of nowhere. And that we have been and that has just been my thing. We we should have been watching this. And so this this just didn't get like it's like it is overnight you know, according to whatever it is. Um, and so going forward, we're going to be keeping our eye as a school system, as well as achievable dream, doing what it's supposed to do to commit to whatever, because clearly we're putting as much money in as a certain level of um, accountability that we need to be holding them to. Um, but we also need to be doing um, 
doing our part. So I'll just, I'll leave that alone. My second question, and I guess this is for, for you, Mr. Manager, and then for Dr. Cashwell. Um, so Ms. Atkins just said that there was conversation about locations. Do we know what locations are? they are? Um, is that secret or something? Is there a reason why? I no, I mean, Dr. Cashwell and I have had multiple conversations. And in fact, as we were working through this budget this year, there was a question of what do we do with the sixth grade from a capital standpoint? And um, you want to answer that question? I mean, we sure. had initially thought there may be a capital allocation. Dr. Cashwell was able to uh, bring it back to where um, there is no capital allocation, and I think right now you have a scenario, and then you have an alternate scenario. Yeah. So let, let me just let me tell you the reason I asked that. I'm really kind of feeling in the, in the dark. Now, I, you know, Ms. Atkins does give me updates from time to time, but never in my ten years have I had to wait for a school board member to give me personal updates on anything. So we've always been open. Like there's no secret process. So we are in the month of March almost. And we're talking about a sixth grade school. I mean, we're talking about sixth grade that we've known about this for several years. And I am now at a joint school board meeting having to ask, can you please tell me what locations you are considering? I'm, I'm not used to that. And I don't want to get used to having to continue to ask, you know, can you please update me on what's going on? Can you please tell me? We've not operated like this. Um, and I'm, I'm certain you know, Ms. Thorne was here, Ms. Ms. O'Bannon, we've been doing this for a long time. And we've not, I've never had to have information that I got to go to somebody and ask, you know. So I, I heard that there were some locations, et cetera. Um, you know, but now it just seems like it's like some sort of secret, secret or something. So do you mind telling us what, what you were considering? And I'd also like to, to jump in for a moment. I think what's significant in this conversation is understanding, um, first and foremost, making sure that the partnership was going to continue. And so having a discussion around making sure that the partnership is going to continue and what improvements are necessary really comes before discussion of location. And I think that's a really key point that both entities understand what improvements need to be made on both sides and then validate that those improvements can indeed be made. The second piece of this really is looking at the contractual obligations. So in understanding the MOU and what's entailed in that contract, to ensure that measurements are in place uh, first uh, is also a critical piece. I do agree that this is something that we need to have answers on as quickly as possible, but those answers cannot come before making sure that both partners in this, in this sort of family uh, understands what's going to be needed to move forward. And in, in knowing that those two critical pieces needed to happen first, and they have, and they are continuing, um, it's important to make sure that, that we allow that to happen. I know that, you know, to your point earlier, making sure that uh, you are in the know. I think that sometimes it is going to be a difficult situation in understanding that sometimes you need time to work through these things because at the end of the day, it's not about the money, the funding, or the location. It's really about what's in the best interest of these children, academically, socially, and emotionally. And understanding that SAME curriculum from Achievable Dream as well as the the rigor of testing within Henrico County Public Schools and making sure as it's executed between both of them, that actually comes first in making sure that the children are served well. And they have to have these conversations in order to ensure that the partnership is going to, to happen. Because the results from Highland Springs Elementary School cannot look like the results of Newport News if it's not executed properly. And so within that MOU, there are pieces of that that needed to be discussed and to add measurements and to understand staffing, so forth and so on. So now that we're at a place where that's being discussed, I'm sure that you're going to be updated around the location as both Henrico County leadership and Dr. Cashwell and Dr. Breland and her leadership team work through that. So I just wanted to provide a little bit more insight into that 
And then I'll, I'll turn the floor back over to Dr. Castro and, and Mr. Matoka. And before you do, Ms. Ms. Chair Mack. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, Ms. Castro, are you comfortable sharing that MOU with this board? Absolutely. Okay. Uh, can, the, I, can I officially request that we get it so we can review it as well? Happy to share that. Number one. Number two, I'll, I'll circle right back to Mr. Nelson's. Do you know what schools you're looking at? Yes, we're looking at a number of options related to sort of the long term vision and the near term. And so um, Mrs. Atkins is correct. There's a lot of conversation that's been happening between Achievable Dream staff and our team to make sure that we're best set up uh, to meet the unique needs of particularly this first class, which is just sixth grade. So that's a small number of students. We're talking maybe 70 or 80 students. That number will, of course, grow as we add seventh and eighth grade and so on. And so when we look at the model that Achievable Dream uses elsewhere, it's a standard alone secondary campus that could feel um, odd or different for a group of sixth graders to be isolated away without peers their own age. So we're looking at some scenarios that might pair them uh, with a middle school for that first year, that sixth grade program. And then as we begin to add other um, grade levels, look at a space. So certainly the Highland Springs um, high school building that's currently the high school that will soon be vacated as the new school becomes available is certainly a site that's an option for a secondary program that would be holistic and include all of the grade levels. Um, we've also looked at the possibility of using our central gardens campus and what kind of modifications or options would be needed. Certainly that's a conversation we're having with the achievable dream team and thinking into the future about what makes sense for a secondary location that that best meets uh, the needs of the students. So I, I'm, I'm sorry, I, I want to go back to what Ms. Atkins says. I, well, okay. We are getting a, the manager is giving us a, a recommended budget in two weeks. Am I correct? Yes, sir. Historically, the school's budget, when did you receive the school's budget, Mr. Manager? Well, actually, the, um, the target goes back to November. Okay, but so did you get a recommended budget from the schools to be included? Reverend Nelson, we, we will be approving our budget this Thursday. So it has not been approved by the board okay. yet. So we will send it to you, to the Board of Supervisors as soon as we approve it on Thursday. But okay. as far as Mr. Nelson, I want you to understand both boards, this is coordinated the whole way through on the operating side. Okay, so so I guess I'm just, I'm, I'm kind of, I'm trying to understand, you know, again, this is my first budget cycle really with Ms. Atkins as my colleague in Verona. I've usually you guys get the budget to us and what you are requesting is in the budget. Right? So yes. so am I hearing you say that that the achievable gym conversation is still open or you guys just you still working through the MOU? You're not sure what the, you're going to do with it? The MOU currently stands and has been in place since 2017. There's been no modification to that. What Mrs. Atkins is referring to is some conversations we've had with Achievable Dream about adding some shared understandings around metrics and outcomes, given that we're, we are revisiting why we're not getting the results we'd hope academically, which I 100% uh, agree. That's a Henrico Schools issue. I own that issue. My staff owns that issue. We have been reviewing the data. We've not stopped reviewing the data. Uh, this is an ongoing process um, every year at all of our schools. We have a, a, a literacy plan that we put into place, a 90-day intensive plan, and all that sort of outside of the achievable dream conversation. So I just want you to feel assured that the academic success of the students in that school is something I own and, and I take full responsibility for, um, as does my staff and team, and we'll continue to monitor that. We did um, share the potential staffing costs for sixth grade with your staff and that's what you just saw presented and that's what's on your handout here and that's just that uh, last number with the asterisk so even though we've not sent over the formal budget as Mr. Votolkis shared um, and as our chair shared because it hasn't been approved we have been coordinating with staff to plan what would the cost be to make sure we've covered the staffing needs to be ready for the sixth graders. So what about the capital? So all so, achievable dream costs are covered. Are covered. Okay. But there's no capital this year because okay. what Dr. Cashwell had advised was that initially it was going right. to be Highland Springs High School. Okay. So I, I don't want to monopolize the time. I you know I see location down here. I thought that's what we were discussing. So I didn't know that we were going. I was going to hear all the other stuff. Um, so it you know it is what it is. Okay. 
I, I, I'm still confused, but I'm going to just let it be. I would love to be able to offer an opportunity for regular updates and provide uh, your board anything you need yeah. from our board and staff on a regular basis related to this topic. I think that may be helpful, and, and we're more than happy to do periodic updates as, as you see fit. Yeah, Mr. Dr. Cashwell, I, I made a note right here to close, when we close this section out just to say, you know, Mr. Manager and Dr. Cashwell, if we can, I'd like to make this a standing topic and our chair, vice chair, as we, especially as we, as we really unfold it quickly and we're at the location, expectations, and conversations, you know, and then we'll share that immediately back with, with our college as well. That's an, that's, a, that's one opportunity for a really good time to share that information, but then two, any regular updates that you're able to provide on an ongoing basis would be, would be very helpful. Well, and Mr. Chair, I think it would be benefit both boards to be completely updated regularly so we know where we stand. So if we get questions from the public staff, whatever, um, that we're prepared with that information, but you have our commitment to give you regular updates um, to, the, to all of the members of the board. And um, that, all, I mean, our board is up to date but it's clear that your board is not. And so we will make that pledge that we will keep you updated and uh, and going forward that if you have questions, we hope you will share them with us. And I mean, the, the worst thing we can hear is I'm confused. And so I want to assure you that we don't want that situation. We want you to have the answers that you need. So if you don't leave with them today, that you will share those and we will get them to you as soon as possible. Thank you, ma'am. You're welcome. Any other questions or comments on that? We're right, right on time. So, Mr. Manager, can we move on to the capital budget? Mr. Chairman, yes. I'm going to ask Mr. Hinton to come up and offer you uh, the same uh, brevity that uh, Mr. Crawford did. And so, uh, Mr. Nelson noted the uh, proposed capital budget, the operating budget, and the capital budget will be uh provided to the board of supervisors on march the 9th i think uh, the county has a long history under the school board knows um, over the years of uh, supporting both the operating and capital budget the capital budget this year is a little unique um, you know we have some referendum projects we have some meals tax projects but you also uh, dr cashwell and i have been in conversations i have the concurrence of the board of supervisors on a recommendation that Mr. Hint is going to share. What you are seeing for the first time, Mr. Nelson, uh, all members of the board, all members of the school board is what will in essence be the proposed capital budget that will be presented. The yellow highlights are schools, Mr. Hint. Thank you, Mr. Manager, and good evening, Mr. Chairman. Madam Chair, members of the board and school board, the handout you just received as the manager noted reflects the manager's proposed capital budget for next fiscal year, fiscal year 21-22. Uh, manager also noted you can see proposed schools projects in yellow. Uh, you'll also see different categorical sections reflecting primary funding sources on that document. So uh, walking through the handout, the proposed capital budget will reflect the last of the 2016 bond referendum projects of which Adams Elementary School was the last project for schools. Um, as the board and school board are aware, of course, the 2016 bond referendum was front loaded uh, intentionally with schools projects. In fact, <clears throat> of the nine projects that are completed today, seven of those projects were school projects. And of course, the two new high schools, uh, the elementary school expansion and nearing completion. You'll see on the handout that the manager is recommending funding $54 million for two ACE center expansions, one at Holland Springs and one at Hermitage, and the one at Hermitage also including some funding for renovation. And typically projects of this size are projects that go forward into a bond referendum. But with the manager recognizing the urgency of these projects, he is recommending we issue 20 year BPSA bonds, Virginia Public School Authority bonds, which is not incredibly common in Henrico. In fact, you have to go back to 2008 to see us uh, the last use of BPSA bonds for Henrico. And that was also tied to a bond referendum and some cost overruns we were expecting at that time. Uh, I believe that was $45 million back then. So it's not common that we use VPSA as a tool. Uh, the next section of your handout reflects proposed general capital projects uh, funded with pay as you go funds. And you can see recommended funding for a number of projects for schools there as well, including annual funding for mechanical and roof replacements. You'll also see $9 million, $9 million 
in meals tax funded projects included in this proposed project, as well as $2 million for school technology infrastructure uh, <clears throat> projects and $3 million recommended replacement land reserve for future elementary school site. In closing out the list before you, you'll see $4.7 million is included for school bus replacement, uh, which is continuing our plan to get your school bus replacement cycle in a 10 year, uh, an optimal 10 year cycle. And that is a goal of ours. In all, you'll see a total proposed capital budget of $235.2 million. And that includes water and sewer projects, which is important for our side to note. And you'll also see $94.3 million of that going to our school system, $94.3 million. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, Madam Chair, members of the school board, that's a pretty significant investment. Uh, we believe in school infrastructure, which is not unusual, as you all know, uh, in this county. And consider, if you will, that since fiscal year 2010, this board has allocated approximately $625 million in capital project funding for school infrastructure. More than $300 million of that was funded by other revenue streams than debt. So other than BPSA, other than, uh, other than the GO bond referendum. And including in that, of course, is meals tax funding, uh, which has allowed schools to complete over 300 individual projects in nearly every school. Going back further and look at this a different way, the county has had three bond referendums since 2010, since 2000, excuse me, totaling just over $1 billion in infrastructure funding. Two thirds, and I say again, two thirds of that amount, $663.1 million exactly was for school projects. And that does not account for the additional $95 million that this board identified to fund the two new high schools and the elementary school expansion over and above the 2016 bond referendum has approved, as well as the performance in $45 million in PSA bonds uh, that we used to finish up the 2005 bond referendum. So Mr. Chairman, members of the board, Madam Chair, members of the school board, unlike many of our peer localities in Virginia and across this country, we take care of our school's infrastructure. This board um, has, has provided a, a significant investments to do so. And the plan before you uh, that you're looking at right now continues that premise. And with that, I'm happy to answer any questions you may have. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Any questions for Brandon? No problem at all. Anybody at Dunham? Uh, Ms. Shea, go ahead. Thank you. I just want to take a moment as uh, I serve on the uh, CTE board and, um, you know, thank, thank both boards for their support of this uh, Highland Spring CTE and Hermitage CTE renovation and expansion. And these are really critical for meeting the needs of our students. We have over a thousand every year that we don't have room for in our program. Um, and, you know, when we really look at making sure that the education we're providing our students is relevant and meets their passions and meets where they're headed, um, CTE is a critical piece in that. And so um, I am excited to see these still a priority in this budget and look forward to getting this across the finish line um, to get these um, centers built. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, Ms. Shea, I can tell you the conversations, uh, we've had a conversation every single time we've gathered this year in 2020 um, when the chair vice chairman was about how to really make that difference and how to move that program forward. Um, so I, I appreciate your comments on that. Question, Mr. Chair. Yes, so the expectation is um, we are looking for some consensus as it relates to this list from both boards. And then we'll start the process. I'm assuming at some point, Mr. Manager, with um, uh, with proposed bond bond, ref bond referendum, possibly 21 22 uh, capital budget area. So it could be 22 bond referendum. I guess that's the first question. And then the second thing is I, I see C land for East End and the West uh, authorized county manager uh, to proceed to procure. So is this conversation that you have you guys talked about this um, chair, vice chair? And this conversation, it really started with the uh, retreat that we had. Right. There have been conversations with chair and vice chair and uh, Dr. Cashwell and I, Mr. Chairman. So you're just looking for consensus again. So on these two items, we're looking for consensus. Yes, sir. OK. Yes. And, and I also want to point out, Ms. Brandon, before you leave, you mentioned that over 20 years, a billion dollars uh, in investment, two thirds of which in the schools. And here again, 94 million of it is, is another 40% of the total investment we've So 
you know, Mr. Nelson, you're, you're right. It's a discussion amongst amongst us if this is where we want to see moving forward and this is the direction we want to, we want to go. But also on the, the West End land conversation has been an ongoing topic that we really need to reach some consensus on to make sure that we're moving in the right direction on that. Mr. Brandon, do you have, do you have something? Uh, if, if I may, uh, for clarification a little bit for Mr. Nelson. Mr. Nelson, um, and uh, I don't know if Ms. Ogburn has been talking to the other school board members. Uh, concern in Western Henrico, specifically the Three Chop District, uh, we are dangerously close and in, in one school over uh, where, where we should be. So the question also comes about how do we achieve, um, what do we need? So conversation has been going on robustly for uh, well over a month now um, between Dr. Cashwell, um, uh, Linda Pritchard, um, Ms. Ogburn and myself on where best to put another elementary or another middle or another high. We have some land already there. Are we going to need to uh, procure more land? So uh, the part of the authorization for the county manager has to do with better communication and understanding and moving forward with, with uh, where best to position to, to cover uh, all, of, all of the West needs. So we talked about this. Um, you know, just for the sake of those who are who live in the eastern part of the county, um, who may be saying, you know, another something in the west, um, a part of the this conversation really is about whether or not we continue to piecemeal add on two schools, or do we just build another one? Um, the Fairfield District, I think um, there is going to be a new elementary school in the Fairfield District, but it's it's uh, in the eastern part of the Glen Allen. Area, I guess, and however you describe it, but it's going, it's in Fairfield, um, which is like the central, um, the western, eastern, and central part of the county. Um, uh, and so, right now, from a school building perspective um, in the east, we're good. New schools, re renovated schools. Um, we don't have we don't have any capacity issues uh, in the eastern part of the county. So um, the issues are this issue does lie in the west, um, and so that's why you don't you don't see any pushback. You see support. And Mr. Nelson, with that being said, you'll also with the with the additions that are being proposed, uh, and with uh, although. We, the, the economy and COVID has slowed some of the world down. It has not slowed uh, the growth in Henrico County down. And, and um, we, we are dangerously close to, to pushing the boundaries. And the additions, although will relieve a lot of areas, uh, it, it's now possible that a single school, an additional school, will cover capacity for another decade or so. so. Madam Chair, I know we, we've been integral in these discussions. Anything to add to that or, or are we, we, do we in agreement to proceed? To let, I, let... I do. Um, and the, the maps that we've just been handed really paint a picture. The three top district is very overcrowded. Um, we have capacity issues. It is a, a real concern. We have presented an option in our CIP that um, that the Board of Supervisors was given a while ago that, um, that, as Mr. Brandon said, we have options of additions. There's also the expansion of the Longan Elementary School that's in the Brooklyn district that will help with this because some of it is right between the two districts, the Three Top District and, and the um, Brooklyn District. And so what we're looking at the possibility of in our CIP is the rebuilding of Longan Elementary School and expanding that capacity there will help um, with 
with that issue on that side. Uh, the, the continual problem, what we've been talking about specifically is River's Edge Elementary, that even after our recent redistricting is still remaining over capacity. And I have stolen Mrs. Kinsella's uh, line several times that we can't redistrict ourselves out of that problem. There's just not a capa enough capacity in that portion of the county to to add enough seats and to have we've got um, you know more children than we have that room in those schools. So we are looking at options and look forward to working with you to determine what's the best way. Um, just recently, I had the opportunity, and I understand Mr. Brandon is going to do the same thing that I did last week, which is basically drive the district. And so Mr. Pritchard, who's our uh, direct, uh, in charge of operations, has ridden the district with me. We have been very targeted and specific as to where our issues are and which areas of the three top district are are, are needing to shift in, in their uh, schools so that we can even out the um, capacity issues and sort of spread families out a little bit. And so I look forward to working with Mr. Brandon and Mr. Pritchard to determine What's the best way forward? And I think we need that discussion to continue as it has been. As Mr. Brandon said, over the last month, we've been talking about this a lot. And we had hoped when we started redistricting, the whole redistricting project in, you know, over a year ago that this would help. It's just not working. The redistricting committee's response was, we can't fix this. And so now it's become clear that we can't. So we're looking at, at several options here. Are we going to add on specific and targeted response to these issues? Or are we going and expand the existing schools? Or is it better to build a standalone school, which has, has also been proposed? So that I think that is an ongoing discussion and more work needs to be done. And I, I think Mr. Brandon has an upcoming road trip with Mr. Pritchard to tour the district and get some very specific neighborhoods and areas that we're targeting. And I had offered Mr. Pritchard to start as early as 630 and we negotiated to eight. There we go. So and he and I did that. And and I think he's really aware of where our issues are. So I look forward to continuing the conversation as to which way we're going. forward. So, Mr. Manager, uh, Dr. Cashwell, if I hear you know, correctly here, there's certainly there's there's concern on both sides here for you guys to continue that conversation. Mm -hmm. I would ask, obviously, that Madam Chair Ogburn and Mr. Brandon obviously be an integral part of that discussion. But there's, right. there's certainly um, there's a need to move forward there and look for look for an answer. Excuse me, Chair, if, if I may. Yes, ma'am. Um, I would request um, <laughs> that Mr. Brandon and Ms. Ogburn definitely keep the Brooklyn District mm -hmm. um, in in the loop oh, as we're discussing things. I know Ms. Ogburn and I have worked very closely looking at the capacity issues where our districts overlap and looking at potential growth um, and newly planned developments. Um, I'd like to stay, I, I don't know if, if you're thinking what your, what your thought process is, and I'd love to hear it, if maybe not tonight at another time, if perhaps um, what we currently have put forward on the capital plan does not work for you. Um, because long and when I look at the um, the rebuild there, I look to also expanding pre-K programming there, as well as using it for capacity that we will need. Um, in addition to the fact that the school side has done our facility studies that show that the buildings that we put forward are not just wants, but their needs for our facilities. Dr. Cash, well, if you could maybe pro provide those listening um, some background as to the facility studies you've had done that our board has reviewed. Certainly, I'm happy to do that. And uh, when you look at the out years, as you know, when we shared um, the capital improvement plan that our board approved, it goes out a number of years, which is um, sort of this long look into not just what's ahead of us and what we see on this list, uh, which certainly accomplishes what we saw as those priority efforts around uh, career and technical education has been uh, noted. But we looked, began to look at all of our facilities that haven't been uh, touched by a renovation or a rebuild and looking at the age and the condition. 
And so, um, as Mrs. Kinsella said, one of the things we did to help us prioritize what we saw as um, issues CIP related for the next decade uh, was not just list our schools in chronological order and think, okay, this is probably how we'll need to tackle some of our aging facilities. But we had a, a group come and actually study uh, the facility and look at the condition of it. Um, and again, uh, look at things like, would it be more cost effective when it's time to renovate or rebuild? And so uh, the, the plan that we um, put forward to you all that looks into the future, and I think some of those are the items listed under potential bond and in, you know, over the next decade, uh, were prioritized in that order based on that study uh, with some of those urgent projects you'll know in those first years, such as Jackson Davis and the campus at Virginia Randolph. I know we've talked about some of those facilities before uh, where the age and the condition of the facility make them um, prioritized accordingly. Thank you, Dr. Cashwell. And, and of course, we, we are very familiar with, with that consultant that came in. Um, I would love to sit down at any point with you, uh, but at this point, I have nothing to sit down with you in regards to because uh, as Mickey and I have both been trying to tackle, uh, that's why we are now actively trying to figure it out. So as soon as, uh, I, and I know my, my fellow supervisor from, from the Brooklyn district, I don't think most mornings I get up without something from him and me back to him. So there's plenty of communication. There's no communication yet because we don't have that plan yet, but we're gonna have it, I bet, within a month. So stay tuned. Mr. Chair. Uh, yes, ma'am, Mr. Chair. Thank you. I, I, I'm glad that Ms. Kinsella brought up the facility studies because that's one thing that came to the top of my mind as we look at this. Um, I, you know, absolutely, we need to make sure we take care of our capacity, um, but we also need to make sure we take care of all of the current needs that we have of our aging um, buildings. And this facility study really gives us um, a roadmap on how to make sure all of our students in all parts of the county have the appropriate facilities they need. And so as we look at adding on a capacity building, um, I truly hope we look at it for adding something on and not um, not pushing it forward at the cost of some of these other buildings that are in um, desperate need of repair or replacement. Um, and then also, uh, just to be officially on the record with this, I am glad that um, as land is looked at for a possible new elementary school, that you, um, it is being looked at in the um, three chopped uh, and or Brooklyn districts. I know there's some land in my district that's been discussed and. Um, well, so before anybody says anything about land um, in a public setting, if we say one thing about that price of land is going to go up significantly. <laughs> so whatever we can do to not identify and, and where anybody's thinking and, or looking. Mr. Manager, I please, please understand that this board has never even remotely mentioned that your board should or funding wouldn't go for what you all have for maintenance. And we have a meals tax that some of the people on this board put forth to ensure that maintenance would be going forward. So that, that's not a concern. What we're look, what, what we are, Ms. Ogburn and I, uh, and, and now Dr. Cashwell and Lenny is a snapshot of the next 20 years so we don't get caught with with an oops how did this happen as the numbers are growing so please feel reassured that no one's going to mess with you all's maintenance and an aging building plan uh, we think it's great absolutely it was a it's a necessary tool for what what we're looking at, and for instance, 3CHOP currently has 220 acres that we're trying to figure out what goes there. So as we asked the manager and the um, uh, uh, Dr. Cashwell to go forward and the manager to proceed, we're looking at every option as well as we know there's land in, in, in your district, how that will play into the growth of not just Western, far Western Henrico, but as, as you know, with 
your addition that is going to relieve some of three chap district it you know it, it's in brooklyn so it's all it's all a puzzle that that needs to we need to look at that 25 year snapshot and start planning today well and to mr Rand, and to your point um it, those are all things that are happening at the same time we're looking at our aging buildings and how do we take care of those but we're also looking at planning for the future and that's what we do that's what we do all do together and and i think that's what our cip and if you look at the master plan for our cip that goes out very far and so you know we just um i think one concern um just to be frank that that some of our board members have have expressed is you don't want to make too many asks you know when is it going to be the tipping point where we have we just some things have to be delayed that kind of thing and we're just hoping that we that the two aren't mutually exclusive that we've got schools that we've got coming up that will be 100 years old soon and we've got to remember that and we've got to take care of those buildings as at the same time take care of these capacity issues too and we're trying to be good stewards of the people's money and make sure that we do the best we can to to make the best recommendations as and best ideas and summations of our of our needs, and so you're right. The due diligence is happening now, and and we have been working together on this. And we just know that that you're also right. Three chopped is near that tipping point, and so it is a priority of ours to make sure we get those capacity issues taken care of. But at the same time. As Ms. Shea said, we're, you know, it's, it, you wear many hats in taking care of all of these issues that we face, and we just don't want any of them to be overlooked and, and know that we're all on the same page on this and taking care of it all. It's like we're getting pressed for time. Yes. Thank you, Mayor. I appreciate it. Mr. Manager, do you have anything to close on that? No, Mr. Chairman, the, um, and I think, uh, you know, that's why I asked Mr. Hinton to provide that overview for some of the newer members of the uh, school board, because, you know, when it comes to the capital facilities of this county, whether it's a pipe in the ground um, or a school, the county is going to do everything it can. So, you know, part of what you're talking about with the facilities plan and other schools really comes about by the next time we we ask the community for authority for a referendum. And as was shared at the retreat, you know, your number is somewhere between three and four hundred million this time. That is a significant sum of money. Um, but all of it, Miss Ogburn, to your point, within the resources that the county has. So um, I only have to look like north, south, east and west to look at the school systems in those localities and make the comparisons as far as facilities. Because, again, you all have been here uh, and have done it and know how we operate. But the answer is, ultimately, as we go forward, um, of that next referendum. But right now, you have significant capacity issues that potentially could impact the growth of the county. And so is there concurrence, I'm mm -hmm. sensing, um, for Dr. Cashwell and I to work on uh, land acquisition within the Three Chop Magisterial District? Mr. Chairman, I believe there's certainly concurrence uh, on that, um, and we'd ask you to go forth and do that uh, immediately, so we so we can understand it. But also, I'll, I'll close by saying that this issue, as the manager mentioned, with regard to the referendum, I fully expect that to be uh, number one on our list of chair vice chair discussions this year as we really prepare for that moving forward, so we can put all the pieces in the same order. Uh, thank you, Mr. Matt. Yes. I would also say not, not just looking at land acquisition, but land allocation, because we we currently have land yes, that sir. we need to look at. And if that will solve the issue, it's not about buying more land. It's about proper allocation. Correct. Thank you, sir. Mr. Manager, next topic is, I believe, Ms. Coates. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, so, Ms. Coates, if you would come forward, and again, for members of school board, members of board, there's a salary proposal that is significant in this year's budget. And part of the reason or um, how that was put forward was because this county uh, runs operations a little differently than others. You will see a number of joint functions that 
we as a uh, locality um, have between our school system and our general government that provides savings to the taxpayer. Uh, tax rate, I believe, has not been, the real estate tax rate has not seen an increase in 42 years. A number of business taxes have been reduced. So Ms. Coates, if you would provide that refresher, because ultimately at, um, at the end of this conversation, the question is, again, for both boards, would you like your chief executives to continue to seek out additional savings for the taxpayers as we move into a referenda and as we, in fact, internalize some of the significant costs that we are uh, asking you, the elected bodies, to allocate for personnel? Ms. Coates. Thank you, and that's a really great opening. The county and schools have a history of success in providing shared services and in any given year, those collaborative services save the taxpayer and both organizations jointly hundreds of thousands of dollars. So one of the ways where we can put additional investment into some of these capital initiatives moving forward is to collaborate further on operational issues and provide additional savings in those areas. Um, some good examples of where that's happening now is in HR, as was mentioned, we have the Unified Pay Plan, Employee Health Services, and we share health insurance program financial functions like procurement, risk management, and audit, uh, which was added in fiscal 20. So just another example of continued success in that area and growth in those collaborative services. Uh, facilities and fleet management are something that we manage jointly right now, as well as certain public safety services like SROs and emergency management, which was added as a joint service in 2007. And I think we would all agree that that has proven to be effective during this pandemic that had some natural disasters sprinkled in. Um, so even with that laundry list, we have opportunities that still exist in all of the non-instructional areas. So things like employee relations and additional HR functions, capital planning and finance, payroll and accounting, um, and then ongoing facilities, maintenance and management are areas where we believe there are um, additional opportunities for continued dialogue. And so with that, really just providing a backdrop for the boards to have a dialogue about um, how we might craft some additional strategies to collaborate and provide further savings for the taxpayer and the organizations by doing things together. Thank you, Ms. Coates. You know, before I open it to the floor for my colleagues' uh, thoughts on, I, I will tell you that a whole, my, my opinion, a hallmark of what Henrico County has done historically and continues to do historically is this, this, is this kind of discussion, how we best serve our constituents with collaborative effort and, and how we do so um, with symmetry, really, and how we move forward. So um, I, I, I can't agree more to continue to look for opportunities like this. We, we, we've seen it recently with audit functions. We've seen it over long-term strength and we've seen it with short-term strength. So um, this to me is, is really what's made Henrico what it's been. And this has to, this type of discussion has to continue. And if you got it, Mr. Manager and Dr. Cashwell, if you can identify more ways to best serve our constituents and do so in the, in the most effective way possible, that is something that I, I can certainly get behind. Any, any thoughts from my colleagues or from, from, from the school board on that? Um, Mr. Chairman, that I'll, I'll refer to something that um, Mr. Patolka said at the opening of our meeting that we have one of the best superintendent. I think you that I'm quoting you when you said that earlier in our, I said, right, the, the best superintendent. So we are in capable hands as far as, as finding those ways to better serve the public and to meet the needs of our stakeholders and our parents and students. So I, I, if, if the two of you can come up with ways to make that happen more efficiently, et cetera, you know, you would have our full support, of course. Thank you, Ms. Arbor. Any other comments or thoughts on that topic? Yeah, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll add that we that we just we just highlighted our employees, right? We just we just we just put them out in the forefront and celebrated what they do for our county and what they do for the residents we serve. We, we just said that we expect the best level of service for our residents. Therefore, we want the best employees to do that to serve them. You know how we how we utilize that that team how we provide the resources for that team. That's what Ms. Coach just explained. And we have found areas where we can be really good and really streamlined 
and really effective. So, you know, Ms. Ogburn, thanks for your comments. And uh, certainly if there are any others, I, I would expect that we would have vibrant concurrence on this, but I, I certainly would open up for more comments. Mr. Schmidt? Yes, ma'am, go ahead. I'd like to basically say I do support efficiencies, any that we could um, gain, but being a newer member, um, at least to the school side, and um, listening to the list of potential synergies um, that we could we could have and historically how have we gone about achieving those mm -hmm. i don't want any employees who may be listening uh, watching this meeting to um, inadvertently get nervous because um, their department perhaps was just mentioned on a mm -hmm. list that um, was going to be considered for efficiency. So if we could maybe sure. um, help our employees breathe a little bit. Yep. Yeah, um, no, no, it's a good question. Let's talk about, I mean, manager, I'm sure you'd go through a litany of them, uh, whether you're going to start with legal or procurement or how the, how the county and the residents have benefited, but go right ahead. No, and I certainly appreciate that, Ms. Kinsella. The, uh, you know, the employees that uh, may be watching, there's any time we have um, we have sought efficiencies. We do not operate like other localities. Efficiencies do not mean your job goes away. Okay, so there is a way that we have found over time where um, structural consolidation uh, leads to efficiencies between the two. So you look at, um, for instance, uh, all of the other localities around and, and what we're able to do with risk management or what we're able to do with CAM. What, what about Chesterfield, Mr. Manager? What, what's going on in Chesterfield? I mean, so, um, you know, I think, Mr. Nelson, you've got a number of issues um, in that particular locality, whether it's just the, 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 the inability to have um, this type of conversation. I mean, we were talking about that earlier, and I think that's a very real thing in some other localities where on this side of the house there is, in this side of the house, there's, there's mine and there's turf. And then you go into and talk to a taxpayer or a business. The businesses that come here are coming because of our schools. So the best investment we can make is in our schools. But what I'm telling you is the fiscal person, the former fiscal person of this county, long term, we have to continue to seek efficiencies everywhere we can. So efficiencies also result in our employees getting anywhere from a 4.4% 4, 4 raise to an 18% raise. That's how you get there. So I don't know if that answers your question, Ms. Kinsella. As far as um, other localities, what my experience has been is that you have two of everything. It's like Noah's Ark. So you've got, you know, two of this office, two of that office, and you really don't get anything done. And that's not what my experience here has been. And there's also duplication of the same effort. Um, and we've seen that when we were in, in this, in the, in the, just in the short term successes I've seen in the two and a, two and a quarter years, we've seen successes from just the elimination of the duplication of the same effort. If, if one side has created the wheel, the other side is going to use that wheel. Um, and and that, that, that is, that's been beneficial in just the short things that I've seen in that time. Any other comments at all on that? I mean, I, I, do I dare say that? Hi, Ms. Kinsella, did, you, did that answer your question? Yes, the the manager is saying if when we consolidate, we simply don't say, okay, so now the general government department is here. See you. Right. We, well, we, we do not do that. Well, right. Historically, we have not done that. I just wanted someone to say it publicly <laughs> for those listening so that no one at home was nervous because. Kim Rico does operate differently, and I'm proud to be a part of it, but that's just not the way we do business. So thank you, Mr. Manager, for clarifying. Yes, ma'am. Thank you all. As we move on, I, I want to leave time to, for closing as well. I know we have a hard style. We have to be across the street um, in, in 30 something minutes, but um, we'll move on to the, to the moving forward in 2021 and beyond. And some of the things we touched on, I think A and B sort of had had some conversation today, right? So we discussed what we what, what we plan to talk about and share, Vice Chair. We have discussed that under the leadership of Roscoe and, and Mr. Brandon last year. You guys led us, I think, admirably in, in, in a way that we really have put some ground groundwork done. You've left a lot um, of thought for Ms. Hogburn and I to continue to move those things forward. And we will. We discussed how important it is for this group 
to really coordinate and launch this referendum concept. Um, it is beneficial not only for our residents, for our county, for our jurisdiction, for the schools. Um, it, it is critically important that we continue that work. Uh, yes, ma'am. Go ahead, Mr. Mayor. Um, a referendum is um, has to be a, a well balanced. Mm -hmm vehicle um, when you take it to the um, public and I would I'm sitting here and thinking of the past referenda that um, we have had we have generally been able to get them passed <laughs> that's obviously the goal um, thinking of the I've, I've, I answered eight emails today and I'm thinking about what those people were asking me about and thinking in terms of a referendum um, the economy right now from the folks that um, I talked to and the emails I responded to have concerns. They have concerns about the economy. In other words, jobs and, and, and not having jobs and uh, having to pay for things in their taxes. So we are are we talking about a possible rep referendum in 22, 2022 and the date of it is important march or november and the economy that we would expect at the time of the referendum and the feeling of the electorate in other words those are all factors that go into this so i i just am feeling a little caution about it i mean that's the one thing i'm thinking right now um in the past there seemed to be momentum for things such as the meals tax there was definitely a momentum because there were so many things that needed to be taken care of uh, in the schools and it passed for and I know the reasons it passed. I understand why it was voted upon, um, but it, it's a moving target, really. I mean, and the economy plays a major part in it. And um, just knowing that there are needs, you have to get the um, not just the parents, the you know, the of children, but the the entire electorate has to have a, there has to be a momentum for it. So, I'm feeling a little cautious right now about how that would, would go about um, doing a referendum in, in 2022. That's just a thought I have right now, just because of the phone calls and everything I've been getting. Mm -hmm. So, but it says beginning an effort. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Um, you know, moving on with 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 issues that that we're moving forward with, I think between these two boards uh, as listed on there. You know, Mr. Nelson's been a been an advocate of it. I've mentioned it with uh, Mr. Kinsella and I have discussed it several times about the use of our specialty centers. Mr. Nelson's been, been talking about it here recently. I think that's on our topic of agenda for discussion. And we, you know, we're certainly interested in how you guys plan to do that and how we can be most effective with that. I think we certainly have to continue to keep a focus on that. Look, it affects capacity. It affects where we're, it affects transportation, those kids. It, it affects so many pieces uh, of, of the points Mr. Nelson brought up as he wants to address increasing capacity in certain areas and the points that Ms. Kinsella and I discuss all the time about how we can mitigate capacity in some areas. So that's certainly a point moving forward as well. Uh, Ms., Ms., uh, Dr. Cashwell, or does anyone on the school side want to talk about the virtual use from, from an equity and an IP standpoint? I know that uh, certainly nowadays those, those topics are on your mind incredibly. It, absolutely, and I'll keep it brief, but would be uh, in the essence of time happy to follow up on this another time. Uh, certainly we've seen um, the, the increased uh, use of virtual to get us through the pandemic uh, bring forward many wonderful lessons about how we can continue to leverage virtual when it comes to reaching more students, increasing access and opportunity. You think simply about courses that are unique, single Singleton courses, for example, think of something like an Arabic four that you're looking to make at a particular high school and the number of students may fluctuate or interest may fluctuate, you know, being able to bring students from any high school to access that class so that increases access and opportunity. Also, um, when we think about some of the things, for example, our CTE students have school 
school for some of their specific programming. There may be an opportunity uh, during various parts in their programming for them to access core programming without having to travel to more than one location. So, uh, and then we think about students at the secondary level or really all levels who may benefit from more of a fully virtual option. The state's done a number of pilots with that through virtual Virginia and some full-time programming that they offer. And so we've uh, continued to see how that might benefit some of our students. So look forward to growing what we do virtually to make sure that we're uh, closing opportunity gaps, uh, increasing opportunities for all students and, and really uh, making sure that we're meeting student needs. Thank you, Dr. Cashwell. And you know, the final piece that's on that agenda that just listed there before we open it up for any other comments as we move forward, but I think we reached clear concurrence that seeking methods. Uh, Dr. Cashwell, Mr. Manager, if you guys could push that forward and, and bring to us as many ideas as you possibly can about efficiency and effectiveness within our, within our, our, our two separate bodies. Anything else on, on those items that, I, that I, I think summarize kind of our discussions for tonight from my colleagues or from the school board? Mr. Chair, we do have an update we want to share on our review of specialty centers that that's here. And so Ms. Dr. Cashwell will do that quickly. Yeah, happy to quickly again and provide more information coming forward. But to the point related to specialty centers um, and particularly I see the note here related to Verina High School, really thrilled to announce that we've been working on some broad um, uh, picture work related to high school redesign across the county. So looking at all of our high school programming, one element of that is career and technical education. We see some of the that need being addressed here with the, um, with the CIP and then other pieces are related to specialty center programming and making sure that we are um, providing the most cutting edge up to date, you know, we're meeting student needs with our programming and also looking at how that plays into capacity. So in the next month or so, our school board will be receiving updates from the teams uh, that have been working on those efforts related to potential next steps. You'll see some recommendations come forward for how we may uh, make some shifts to programming, make some additions, um, and certainly capacity was one thing that was taken into account and creating those recommendations we'll be bringing to our board soon for their consideration. Well, and, and we will also pledge to share that update with the Board of Supervisors once we get it and fine tune it in our high school redesign. We will share that with you so that you have our, our the way forward for our specialty centers and any growth and additions that we see. And so we, we should be getting that. Um, I think it's the first meeting in March, if I remember. It's in March that we get that. But we will share that with you as soon as we get it. Are we doing a um, doing budget week? Is this taking the place of the conversation that we had during the budget? So then is it possible to hear some of that uh, mid-March? We can make that happen. Yeah. Well, she said first week in March. So. I just wondered when it was, when we get it, is the beginning in March. It's third right, so our, our, our budget is, is third, I think right. the 15th through the 18th or something like that. Thank you, appreciate that update. As we as we come to a close, uh, Madam Chair, any comments from either yourself or, or your colleagues on the school board before we close? I do have a comment. I'm just really quickly, I'm just very grateful that we have the opportunity to sit amongst each other and have candid conversations, whether it's about a fact or how we feel, it's really important that that we do this in this setting and that the public has an opportunity to see leaders work together Absolutely. in a respectful way. And I also think, you know, as examples, we're setting a great one. And I'm just very grateful and just wanted to share that simply. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Mrs. Shea had one quick comment. Yeah, as we, as we look forward uh, towards more ways that we can uh, work together uh, that we spoke about earlier, I just encourage us all to continue to approach it from a collaborative standpoint. The you know manager mentioned some other districts kind of have turf words over, is it my department or your department? And when we collaboratively share those things and we collaboratively all um, you know put our pieces in, I think that is how we build synergy as a County to move forward and one thing that sets him right go apart. So I appreciate the opportunity to um, collaboratively meet with you all today. Thank you, ma'am. I think we're, we're, we're just, I think we're all on the same spot. We appreciate the opportunity to to work with you and, and the other the members of the of the board, but to have those frank conversations that move us forward. So we appreciate that and look forward to our chair vice chair meetings continuing. Thank you, ma'am. 
Any comments from my colleagues, Mr. Brandon, you all set? Ms. O'Bannon? Mr. Nelson? Yep. Thank you, sir. I, I want to reiterate um, the, first of all, thank you guys for this time. I think this is the first time that we've done this, uh, not doing a budget meeting and not forced. So this was just a conversation to get updates. So whatever the idea was, thank you for making this happen and looking forward to more of these. Uh, I just, uh, I'm encouraged, but I'm also, um, there's just a sense of challenge as it relates to communication. Both of us are elected bodies with our own responsibilities. And, you know, we try to stay in the lane of our responsibility. Sometimes people don't understand what that is. So they may think a school board member's responsibility is something that the board of supervisors is responsible for. And we get it all the time. Um, board of supervisors members asked to do things that are school board member responsibilities. The communication piece of it is key. For the majority of the time I've been on the board, communication, um, we've been able to communicate. Not, we've not always agreed. We've had issues sometimes, but ultimately we've been able to agree. Uh, we've been able to communicate. I want you guys to know that we support schools. Like you've got to understand um, we're, we're, you know, I, and I won't call out names, but I just, I watched the board yesterday, um, you know, a locality where there still was no commitment to um, fully funded uh, budget. There was no commitment to um, doing anything beyond one sector of our employees. And if you think about just since I've been here, it's not going past, it's not Ms. O'Bannon's story, Mr. Thornton's story, who only has seven terms, right? Seven for eight terms. They've been here for decades. In 10 years, we built schools. We committed a meals tax that goes to you guys. I mean, straight to you pretty much, whether it's operational or capital, um, whether it's a bond referendum that you get the major percentage of. Now you're looking at us with the VPSA bonds that could possibly be something that we are looking at for these CTE, CTE centers. Um, 56 to 57 percent. Every budget that I voted on has been 56 or 57 percent of the budget that goes to the schools. And so, yes, I'm going to be passionate about it. It is the majority of the budget. So I'm going to ask questions. I'm going to care. We are trying to cover everything. Capital, we're trying to put you in renovated schools, new schools. We're trying to make sure you got the highest paid um, employees. And if there's something else that we could do, tell us. All I'm asking for you, all I'm asking in return is to not be condescending when you talk to me. Share information, communicate and let us try to work together. That, that's, all I'm, that's all I'm asking. Great schools from west to east, east to west. You tell us what we need, what you need. The buildings, we're taking care of it. We're trying our best. The employees, I mean, there's no set of happier employees in the, in the region right now than Henrico County employees. What else you need? Talk to us and tell us. And in the meantime, let's let's communicate so that we can do what's best for the people that we serve. That that's that's all I ask. Thank you, sir. You know, as we close, I, I will just say thank you to staff. I know this is a, long, a large undertaking for the staff who put this together. For the folks who presented today, thank you very much for being prepared and helping us guide through this conversation. Um, thank you to my colleagues on this board and as well as board super, uh, uh, school board members for really coming together and having this conversation. I think it was just noted that the, the more this happens, not only the better we get, but the optics to the folks we represent, this is how it's done, right? So this is how it's done. So I appreciate your time. Uh, Dr. Cashwell, Mr. Manager, thank you for all the continued work you do. Look, we've got a lot to do. Um, our group, we've just discussed a lot of things in a short period of time. We have a lot to do, but I'll again reiterate, there's never been a better time, more exciting time in Henrico County. So thank you for all your attention. I know we've got a board meeting to get to across town. Uh, thanks, everybody, for being here, and we'll see you soon.